In the early 2000s, a quiet revolution began in southern Africa. A Zimbabwean inventor named Maxwell Sangolani Chikambuzo started building machines that seemed to defy conventional science. His claims were bold, cars that powered themselves, homes that ran without electricity bills and aircraft that never needed fuel. Most of the world dismissed it as another wild African dream, impossible by the laws of physics, but documents, demonstrations, and patents from both African and U.S. offices began to surface, showing there might be more truth to his story than anyone expected. The question that changed everything was simple, could a self-powered car really exist? And if so, why was the U.S. patent system suddenly showing technologies eerily similar to what Chikambuzo had already built years before? This is the investigation into the hidden world of RF power conversion, energy harvesting, and the mysterious patents that might reveal how a self-powered car actually works. To understand this story, we start in Harare, Zimbabwe, where Chikambuzo began his experiments in a small workshop. He was not a university engineer or a corporate scientist. He was a self-taught innovator obsessed with frequency, resonance, and electromagnetic energy. Witnesses recall seeing him run a small radio frequency generator that powered light bulbs and fans without visible wiring. Over the years, he scaled up this principle, integrating it into what he called the green power machine. According to him, it captured ambient radio frequencies, converted them into usable electrical energy, and stored it for continuous operation. By 2015, he had installed prototypes in cars, generators, and even a drone. That same year, he demonstrated a self-powered electric car that reportedly ran indefinitely without charging. It was labeled the Sangilani Self-Charging Electric Vehicle, and international media briefly covered it before the story faded. Yet quietly, patent filings and research in the United States began describing technologies that sounded strikingly familiar. Between 2016 and 2022, several U.S. patents emerged discussing ambient RF energy harvesting, resonant magnetic coupling, and wireless power conversion for vehicle propulsion. While none of them explicitly mention Chikambuzo by name, the terminology and conceptual overlap are undeniable. One patent describes a multi-stage RF converter that captures electromagnetic waves and converts them into DC power suitable for electric drives. Another outlines a feedback-controlled resonance system that keeps power flow stable under motion, similar to what Chikambuzo claimed his cars could do. Even more surprising are the dates, many were filed shortly after international demonstrations of his prototypes. The coincidence is hard to ignore. Experts in the U.S. energy sector often describe RF energy harvesting as an inefficient concept, more suited to powering sensors or micro-devices, not vehicles. But documents in the Department of Energy's archive show experimental funding for large-scale RF to electric systems, specifically in defense and transportation research. If you dig deeper, you find references to self-sustaining vehicular systems and wireless power continuity networks. Each of these descriptions mirrors the foundation of what Chikambuzo called free energy mobility. The deeper we go, the more the lines blur between independent innovation and potential replication under new names. Maxwell himself claimed that he attempted to register his inventions with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office but was denied because they were classified under perpetual motion. Such inventions, by definition, contradict established physical laws and are not granted patents. But there's a loophole. If the same principles are presented under electromagnetic or resonance terms, the patent can proceed under a different classification. And that's where the story turns complex. In the years following his claims, U.S. corporations began obtaining patents for technologies described as ambient electromagnetic field energy recovery devices. These weren't fictional. They are searchable, publicly available patents describing systems that could, in theory, power vehicles using surrounding electromagnetic waves. If this sounds exactly like Maxwell's principle, that's because it nearly is. 
So the burning question is, did Maxwell Chikambutso discover a real working method to power vehicles without fuel, and did the world quietly take notice through his open demonstrations, or was his idea coincidentally parallel to ongoing research already developing in the United States? Both scenarios carry massive implications. If the first is true, then an African inventor might have unknowingly triggered a silent technological shift. If the second is true, then his work stands as a remarkable example of how global scientific minds can arrive at similar breakthroughs independently. What remains undeniable is that Maxwell's self-powered car demonstrations were real enough to draw engineers and journalists from around the world. In one widely reported test, his electric vehicle ran continuously for over 500 kilometers without recharging, producing stable voltage from an internal RF conversion unit. That same year, observers noted that the car's engine bay contained no visible alternator, fuel tank, or battery pack of conventional size. The energy seemed to come from nowhere or everywhere, depending on your understanding of resonance physics. RF conversion devices, as described in modern patents, use antenna arrays tuned to absorb frequencies between 3 MHz and 30 GHz. These frequencies are omnipresent, produced by radio towers, satellites, Wi-Fi, and even the Earth's natural magnetic field. When properly converted, these waves can generate small but continuous electrical current. Chikambuso's claim was that his system amplified the current using harmonic resonance, sustaining operation indefinitely. This idea is not impossible, just not yet proven at large scale. The turning point came when rumors spread that several U.S.-based labs had begun reverse-engineering Chikambuzo's prototypes. Unconfirmed reports claimed his demonstration car was later examined by American engineers under a research collaboration. Though no official records exist, witnesses say engineers were stunned by the circuitry, which operated under frequencies outside conventional EV control systems. By 2020, patent filings for closed-loop RF-powered energy systems appeared in the databases of California and Texas. Some independent analysts believe these could be indirect derivatives of his ideas. The documentation is ambiguous, filled with technical jargon that obscures its true origin. But to those who followed Maxwell's story closely, the timing feels deliberate. Now, the second half of this investigation steps into uncertain territory, the realm of speculation and rumor. Because while much of what we've discussed is verifiable, what follows is a patchwork of whispers, leaked notes, and theoretical assumptions circulating in tech circles. The claim is that a method known as the RF conversion retrofit now exists in prototype form in the United States. According to unverified sources, this method allegedly allows an electric car to operate indefinitely using ambient electromagnetic energy similar to what Maxwell demonstrated. The design supposedly involves a three-stage RF device installed near the vehicle's power controller. Stage 1 captures available RF energy. Stage 2 converts it into usable DC voltage. Stage 3 regulates and amplifies the current through harmonic feedback. Together, the process maintains a steady power output, removing the need for charging. If this is true, it represents a seismic leap in automotive energy technology. But the evidence is thin, mostly patent references and industry rumors. One rumor claims that a major U.S. automaker has quietly acquired intellectual property related to ambient energy propulsion systems. Another suggests that prototypes have already been tested under military contracts in Nevada, disguised as field communication vehicles. In this scenario, the technology may have been classified as a defense-grade innovation rather than a consumer product. That would explain why the public has not seen it, despite patent traces existing in open databases. Supporters of this theory argue that governments often absorb disruptive technologies to control their release pace, especially those that could collapse energy markets. Critics dismiss this as fantasy, pointing out that no peer-reviewed data confirms sustained vehicle operation from ambient RF energy alone. Both sides present compelling arguments, leaving the truth uncertain. The maybe side believes the silence is intentional, that the patents we see are coded references to something larger, 
protected under energy confidentiality laws, they note how certain patent filings abruptly change terminology from RF conversion to resonant energy coupling, possibly to mask their connection to Chikambutso's method. They also highlight how funding for energy scavenging vehicles increased in U.S. Department of Energy budgets around 2021. Coincidence? Maybe. The May Not Be side argues the patents are simply extensions of wireless charging research, not self-powering systems. They emphasize that while Maxwell's demonstrations were intriguing, none were conducted under verified scientific conditions or published in technical journals. Therefore, until reproducible data exists, these devices remain speculative. The heart of the rumor persists because both explanations feel plausible. We know governments and corporations often patent overlapping technologies under obscure names to secure control of future markets. We also know inventors like Chikambuzo sometimes exaggerate breakthroughs out of genuine belief in unverified science. So the truth lies somewhere in the tension between innovation and secrecy. In recent years, Chikambuzo has been relatively quiet, with sporadic appearances and statements claiming ongoing partnerships with U.S. engineers. Some of his social media posts hint at new energy collaborations and RF integration with existing EVs, but no official company announcements or product launches have followed. This vacuum of information fuels even more speculation. Could it be that Maxwell sold or licensed parts of his invention under confidentiality agreements? Or could it be that his concepts inspired others who then refined the science into something workable? If the latter is true, the U.S. patents might be the first signs of that refinement reaching maturity. But if not, they could simply be part of an unrelated technological evolution that coincidentally mirrors his theories. Either way, the narrative surrounding self-powered vehicles continues to attract global attention. Energy independence is not just a scientific pursuit, it's a geopolitical one. Whoever controls the technology that can generate power from thin air controls the future of transportation, communication, and even warfare. That's why these rumors matter. Because whether or not Maxwell's device works exactly as claimed, it points to a direction the world is already moving toward, decentralized, wireless, renewable power. And the patents prove that this race is real. In the end, the story of Maxwell Sangalani Chikambuzo's self-powered car is less about one man's invention and more about what it represents. It challenges our understanding of where energy truly comes from. It blurs the line between scientific possibility and institutional limitation. And it reminds us that great ideas often emerge far from the laboratories of Silicon Valley or Washington, D.C. Or perhaps his ideas inspired others who finally made them feasible under new engineering paradigms. What remains undeniable is that his vision, a world where vehicles power themselves, has now found echoes in U.S. patent archives, academic journals, and global energy discussions. And that is no coincidence. So when we hear whispers of new RF devices being tested in secret labs, we should remember where this all began, in a small workshop in Zimbabwe with a man tuning frequencies, chasing invisible power, and dreaming of cars that would never need fuel again. Maybe his invention was suppressed, Maybe it's being refined in silence. Or maybe it was all just a step in the long journey toward a truly wireless energy future. Whatever the truth, the U.S. patents are real, the science is advancing, and the dream of the self-powered car refuses to die. And that perhaps is the most powerful energy of all, belief.